Hi, it's Gloria with Cheap Yummy Shiny, and I'm going to take you on Scrumptious Sunday. Today, I'm going to make guacamole, or guacamole, or guacamole, if you're Peggy Hill from King of the Hill. Um, but it's going to be probably much better than anything she would make, since she thinks that her avocado should not be ripe. I meant to make this last week for Cinco de Mayo, which, by the way, is not Mexican Independence Day. But, uh, unfortunately, I was stymied, blocked. I was avocado blocked. Seriously. They were green. They were hard. I couldn't find a good ripe avocado to save my life. And uh, in order to make good guacamole, it needs to be lovely and ripe. Um, and those weren't going to work. So, I finally got my avocados to ripen. Good for us. So, um, just so you know, we're going to use some really fresh ingredients. Uh-oh, there goes a tomato. So, <laughs> I'll be washing that extra. Um, so, uh, I'll be using avocados, fresh tomatoes, onions, fresh squeezed lime juice. I'll also be using um, jalapeno peppers and, um, and, of course, cilantro. You cannot have it without cilantro, some salt and pepper. Um, this is going to be very basic, and the way that Mexicans tend to make guacamole is to take something basically like almost to make a pico de gallo, which is that almost, uh, that, that it's not really a salsa, but it's kind of like a chunky salsa with tomatoes, um, onion, cilantro, hot pepper, and lime juice with salt. Um, and you, you know, you'll usually maybe serve that with like a, a barbecue or, or you'll see it like for sides for your fajita or something like that. Well, you'll almost make a pico de gallo, the fedia, and you put it together with mashed up guacamole. And it basically makes a fantastic guacamole. And one of the big secrets of guacamole is it has to have lots of flavor. Um, I love avocado on its own. I do. But whenever I have a bland guacamole, to me, it just really isn't proper guacamole because it's supposed to have flavor. That means enough onion that has to have plenty of lime, which helps it from getting brown, and enough salt to give it flavor. And of course, you have to have a little bit of a kick. I realize we can't eat spicy foods, so a mild kick, uh, which is what I'm doing today. I'm going to do a mild guacamole because I'm taking this to lucky co-workers, taking it over to work at the, at the station. Um, and yes, we eat anything in the morning. It doesn't have to be breakfast food because, well, we get up in the middle of the night and breakfast almost doesn't have any meaning anymore. It's kind of sad. That's okay. We'll be eating guacamole and chips for breakfast. All right, I'm going to take you to my table this time instead of my counter, um, and I will show you how to make a good guacamole from, well, I am Mexican, although I've been here for an awfully long time. I still grew up in a very Mexican household speaking Spanish, so I will claim authenticity. All right, I'll see you on my table. All right, we're at the table, uh, and I've got all my stuff all pre-done, just so you can see it. I've got onion, I've got a jalapeno. I decided to take it easy on my coworkers. This is a one and three quarters jalapeno, and I um, seeded out a little bit of it so as to make it a little less spicy, but I left the seeds in part of it. Uh, some chopped cilantro, I would guess this is about three quarters of a cup. This is... Uh, basically three quarters of a large onion. I have four diced Roma tomatoes. And of course I've got all my limes and my avocados. So I'm gonna grab my avocados. So uh, starting out with the first one, easy, easy way of cutting avocados. And I know a lot of people are like, well, and they scoop it out and they have trouble. I get that. Well, I have this handy dandy knife. I know a lot of you don't have something like this um, but I like it. So you open up the avocado. Easy way to mush this up. I actually dice it in the shell. I know I'm sure you've seen this and you know what really helps is my rounded knife. So I am actually cheating a little bit. Um, especially since I don't need to grab a spoon. I'll just do that and voila, look at that. Abracadabra. All done. Okay, I'm back. And I am on the last half of uh, avocado. Try and, like I said, hold on to those pits. You're going to want some of those pits, especially with this much avocado, uh, guacamole. 
And I'm making kind of a lot because there are quite a few people on the morning crew. And almost everyone likes guacamole. I know that some people don't. They say they don't like the texture. They say it's slimy. And I'm like, well, it's supposed to be creamy, not slimy. So if you're having slimy avocado, something's wrong with it. Also, different uh, species of avocado, like the Mexican avocado is very creamy because it has a decent fat content. Whereas those giant ones, I don't remember what they're called, the ones that you get out of California, those have more water content. I don't find them very flavorful, um, and they are lower in, in fat, but I find them watery and, and, and not flavorful, and that might be um, the sliminess. I don't know if they get slimy or not. I try to avoid them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is a potato masher. In Mexico, we use it for bean mashing, and I'm just going to mash up my avocados. Now, you don't have to use one of these. You can uh, use a spoon, back up the fork. Chances are you won't be making quite this much. <laughs> this is quite a lot of guacamole that I'm making. Um, most likely, most people will be using one or two avocados at most and not making four giant avocados <laughs> at the same time. I tend to like my avocado creamy uh, and well mushed and guacamole. I know some people like it chunkier. I prefer creamier because the chunkiness for me comes from the other ingredients. It's got the onion, it's got tomato, it's got you know peppers and stuff in it and so it has quite enough texture going on. Alright, mushy mushy and uh, this is really a very fast process. Um, once you know Sorry about all the movement. If I'm moving you, you're on the same table with me, so I do apologize. Uh, I wish that I were on a different table, but I am not. All right. Let me get all that delicious avocado off of my masher. I've had this masher for years. It's stainless steel, and I've had it for, or is it steel? I don't even know. I've had it for a very, very long time. But there we go. Mushed up avocados. So now we're going to add le tomate or el tomate. Remember I said this is for um, cut up Roma tomatoes. And I like, as I said previously, I like a lot of ingredients, a lot of flavor and guacamole. And if you've ever been to a good Mexican restaurant, uh, one that's not necessarily very Americanized, you'll have the same thing. Again, I do apologize for the movement here. Um, I'm going to try to minimize this by holding it up. <laughs> that might help a little bit. Sorry about that. I don't have... I, I, I'm thinking that maybe I should have not done it on the table. <laughs> All right, let me put the rest of it on there. There we go. Now I'm going to add the onion. I might not add all of the onion. Let's see how this turns out. Oops, there's a giant piece that I don't need to be using. Pick it all up. Don't want to shock someone with a giant piece of uncut onion in there. Alright, there we go. Notice this is chunky without leaving the avocado completely unmushed. That's because there are enough ingredients in here to make it delicious. Delicious, I tell you. That doesn't mean there isn't an unmushed bit of avocado in there. It's like a little surprise. Okay, putting in all the pepper. I'm just pointing out that this is about three quarters of a big onion that I chopped up. Um, I might put some more in there once I taste this because, you know, once you put everything together, do it to taste. Some onions are sharper than others. Some are milder than others. Um, so if you have a particularly mild onion, you might want more onion flavor in there. So I used about three quarters of the onion that I chopped. So we're going to say it's about half a big onion so far. We'll see if I put more in it. All right. Let me avoid the shaky shaky. Mix it in well. Turn, 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 turn. Look at that. It smells delicious. All right. 
And because I love cilantro, I'm going to be generous with my cilantro. Generous, I tell you. And anyone who doesn't like cilantro, I realize that, you know, you've got those taste receptors that make it taste gross instead of interesting and delicious and mysterious and fresh and lovely. And I do truly feel badly for you because, wow, that's a quite a flavor profile that you have to miss out on because it tastes like soap to you. And that's just sad to me because I think that cilantro is a gift of the God or of God. It's one of God's gifts to the world. Avocado, cilantro, hot... All of the things that I think are gift to the world from God are in this bowl. We're about to be anyway. Mexicans anyway. We, we love cilantro. We love hot pepper. We love onion. We love avocado. We love lime. All right, I'm going to put this to the side. As I told you earlier, a lot of lime is ideal. And I have a nice, this is actually a lemon squeezer, but I find that if you get like the little lime squeezers, they're just not big enough, and I've broken many a citrus squeezer. I can't even tell you. I'm like, I have to get one a couple of times a year. It's very frustrating. So, so this is two full juicy limes. If the limes are dry. Use more limes, and sometimes you'll get dry limes, which is a total, total bummer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put in salt. Now, this is going to be to taste. Some people like more salt, some people like less. The other upside to using a lot of lime in your recipes is you can reduce the salt a bit because the lime almost acts as a... I won't say a salt substitute, but it has a flavor that will, uh, um, I guess, substitute for salt. It'll make it so that you don't mind. So I just put in uh, salt and pepper, fresh ground um, pepper and sea salt. You can use table salt. You can use pre-ground pepper if you like. I just like uh, fresh ground pepper because the flavor is so lovely. And let's see if this is enough. I grab a little bit out of here, taste it, see if it has enough salt and pepper or salt and lime. Hmm, like I said, might need more. Like I just said, I put in lime and then thought, well, you know, this might be so much, you know, and this sounds weird. I'll tend to put in a lime per avocado, especially if, like I said, if the limes are dry. You don't have to put that much in there. Maybe you don't like it, but I will tell you this. It tastes so much better. The citrus tang, you know, with the creaminess, it just, it, it really works well with it. It won't be too citrusy because it's a... Uh, it's very creamy, it's high in fat. It will deal with it. It needs a bit more salt. It will deal with the acidity very nicely. And as I said, this is a lot of guacamole, so. I'm really not over salting it or over liming it. It just is a lot. And, and and if it looks like it's a lot of flavor, it needs to be. It needs to be delicious. The last thing that you want is a bland guacamole. And I usually find most guacamoles that I get at restaurants very bland. Whereas people have my guacamole and think it's absolutely wonderful to toot my own horn. I am tooting my own horn proudly. Proudly, I tell you. All right. Let me taste this and see if it's got enough everything. All right. I think
think it needs a tiniest bit more onion. Voila, she is done. Now, as I said before, I know it sounds weird, you leave the pits in the guacamole. If you don't leave the pits in the guacamole, it will brown far faster. I don't know what the reasoning is. I can't tell you why it works. I'm sure there's some chef out there and possibly some scientists that would love to refute that. But then I'd like them to uh, look at, you know, uh, observational evidence from every Mexican cook around the world. Yes, we are everywhere. And tell me that it doesn't work because we say it does. Okay, look. Look at this beautiful thing. Look at it. Look at this giant. This thing is bigger, literally is bigger than my head. I'm taking a bowl of guacamole bigger than my head to work tomorrow with two giant bags of chips, which aren't going to be enough, but you know, people just grab spoonfuls of it and eat it at my job. They like the guacamole and they're going to be happy. Um, so this is delicious, obviously. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed uh, today's scrumptious Sundays, learning how to make Mexican guacamole. Uh, not like Peggy Hill from King of the Hill, because what did she say? Who cares if your avocados are hard? Life is hard. You cannot make authentic guacamole with lima beans and Ritz crackers. Well, no, she's right, but you also can't make it with hard avocados. All right. Thank you very much. Much love. Look at it.